Home buyers cannot afford houses in this market. For real. Right. They are really feeling the squeeze in this market. This is house buying season right now, guys. <laughs> and individuals cannot even afford a house to purchase. Why is it that individuals cannot afford housing at this exact moment? Well, we're gonna really jump into it. My name is Orlando and welcome to my channel, but let's get to it, guys. So home buyers, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I've been telling individuals to watch out for mortgage rates. Let's jump into this article here. It says, the one-two punch of higher mortgage rates and escalating home prices reduce home buyers' ability to buy a home in February. The trend is also likely to worsen in the coming months. Guys, coming months, I've been saying this, it's going to worsen. The higher the rates go, the less buying power people have. It also says the national median monthly mortgage payment settled in loan applications increased 8.3% from $1,526 in January to $1,653 in February. Compared to February 2021 payments, it jumped 25.6%, guys. 25 point, L listen, on top of dealing with your mortgage payment, someone who wants to get into a home today, you're gonna pay 25% more in your monthly payments than you would have if you got into a home at those low, low, low prices of when it comes to a mortgage. If you would've got into those low mortgage rates back a year ago, those sweet 2.68%, you had room to make things work, but even still, things were still overpriced back then. Now we come to today where we have an overpriced market that has high mortgage rates. <laughs> and when you have high mortgage rates and overpriced, of course you're going to pay higher. But you're paying 25% more on top of high gas prices, on top of high grocery bills. Like when does it stop? The squeeze is a lot more than the 25%. We're talking about homes right now. But if you add in all of the extra costs that someone has to pay now just to live, are you going to really qualify for a mortgage? When we look at your DTI, your debt to income ratio, guys that is what a underwriter is going to look at when it looks at do you qualify for this loan do you qualify let's look at all of your debt and how much money you have to spend monthly if we look at that and all of these increased costs are happening what do you think your debt to income is going to look like now it's going to be higher, which means that you can borrow less right you can borrow less meaning quote unquote what I always say your buying power decreases. Let's look at some other type of loans. This says conventional loan, national median, mortgage payments went from 1582 in January to 1749, almost $200. Meanwhile, FHA loans increased from 1,142 to 1,201, which is not that really that much. I think it's like 50 bucks. A higher mortgage payment to income ratio means new loans are taking up a larger share of a typical person's income due to the increasing application loan amount, raising rates, and a decrease in earnings. Guys, <laughs> I've been saying this. When you have all of these things piling up on top of each other, it's decreasing your opportunity to buy a bigger home or a home that costs more to give you more space. And what ends up happening is you end up buying these over inflated houses that I always say, let's say it together again, do not overpay. <laughs> I always tell people, do not overpay. In this market, there are so many things going against you. So many things going against you. The last thing that you need to do is to pay $50,000 over asking price to win a bid, guys. Hear me again. The last thing that you need to do is pay $50,000 over asking price to win a bid. Let these guys do that. Let these guys pay $50,000, $100,000 over asking and then pay a higher mortgage rate on top of that. If you do that, if you do that, and let's just say you, you do, you're gonna end up in this same situation that we're talking about now. Let's say you buy a house over $100,000. Then all of a sudden, mortgage rates are at 5% now. 
uh, a little bit over 5%. So now you've got that over 5%. And then a recession hits, and then all of a sudden, you lose, I don't know, $60,000 worth of equity. Well, you lost 60,000 of the overpayment that you paid for the house. So now you're upside down in the house. Now you have to wait it out till the market comes back just to get back to the same level, meaning what you purchased it at. It may take you five to six years to get all the way back to where you started today. But if you just would have waited, if you just would have waited just a little bit, you could have jumped into the market and bought a home at a lower price. A lot of times I see you guys in my comments and you're like, hey Orlando, you know, you, you're telling people don't buy a house. I'm not telling people not to buy houses. I'm telling people to do their research. And when you do the math and numbers, and if it doesn't work out for you, then don't do it. But if you think it does work out for you, then by all means. I'm just giving you the information. But this is what I could say for majority of people. Majority of people cannot afford to pay $100,000 or $50,000 or even $20,000 over asking price on a home. Everything is high, right? You try to rehab anything, you try to do rebuild some things in your home. It's gonna be a 30, 40% premium on top of that just for materials, even if you do it yourself. <laughs> I mean, do I need to say more? Most people, I mean, I can just do all the math here and it's like you got 25% higher payments. You paid $100,000 over asking. It's gonna be $40,000 to get it the way that you want to get it. Oh, and by the way, you never did an inspection on the property. Also too, you didn't get an appraisal. Uh, what else did you do? Oh yeah, you didn't even know that all of the appliances that you have to replace those too. Oh, did I forget to tell you that there's a shortage of uh, appliances and they're gonna cost more also on top of that. So at the end of the day, you're gonna end up paying all of these extra costs that maybe you didn't think about. You think it to yourself, well, I'm listening to Orlando and it doesn't really make sense when I actually do the numbers, I'm gonna end up paying $200,000 over at the end of the day on top of a 30 year mortgage that I'm gonna probably pay $300,000 at the end of that in interest. I don't, I don't know if this is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but and that's what I'm trying to get people to understand is that it's not about me telling you not to do it or you do it. It's to open your mind and give you the research that maybe some of the things that you have not thought about and said, you know what? I didn't think of that. I'm glad Elena brought that out. Let me go ahead and do my research and make sure that I won't get caught in this. <laughs> and that is the that is the premise of my videos. It's not to be doom and gloom. It's to give you information that you may not have thought about to make the best decision for yourself possible. And then I'm gonna hit you with the one, two punch here. You, you know, if you've been watching my videos, I did a video on buy versus rent. And I know a lot of you guys said, Orlando, <laughs> I forget renting, you need to buy now. You need to buy right now. And I was given some, some pushback on the reasons why renting may be in your favor right now. But let's just look at the numbers here. Let's look at the data, right? It says, the report also shows that mortgage payments for home purchases have increased relative to rent. The MBA national mortgage payment to rent ratio rose from one 0.01 in December 2020 to 1.4 in November 2021 and 1.5 in December 2021. The national medium asking rent in the fourth quarter 2021 was 1,207 up by 16% compared to the first quarter. That means what they're saying to that guys is that it's currently right now cheaper to rent than to buy a home. Now, that I'm not saying that, that's what the data says. <laughs> that is what the data says. So currently right now with mortgage rates, individuals will be looking and going, huh, I'm gonna compete with all of these people and I'm going to overpay just to live my life, driving to work, eating with my family, doing things. Also, if I need to repair the place, I'm going to pay a premium for that also. Hmm. 
And right now, the biggest reason why I was going to buy a home, because it's always cheaper to buy a home and have a mortgage rather than paying rent. But that is not true anymore in the average, in the big scheme of things. Doing the full average, that is not the case today. <laughs> So with that information, what are you going to do with that? If you're on the line right now about buying a home versus renting, this information is key to you. It is golden to you guys to figure out if buying a home is worth it today. <laughs> And so hopefully you got value out of this content. And I'm gonna need you to watch this next video here. It will help you learn all things about what's going on in this crazy housing market. Also get into your first rental property. Check out in the description and join our membership program. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.